Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes presents The Big Story. Headquarters. Police? Yeah. This is Walt Kramer, the grain inspector. Yeah. I was just short cutting back from Cedar Lake across the city dump. Yeah, so? Well, I just saw a pair of silk stockings sticking up out of the dump. Yeah? Yeah. The thing is, there was legs in them. A woman's legs. The Big Story. Here is a... It's sound and it's fury, it's joy and it's sorrow, as faithfully reported by the men and women of the great American newspapers. Minneapolis, Minnesota. From the pages of the Minneapolis Morning Tribune, the headline story of a murder victim who was buried alive. Tonight, to Ralph K. Mills of the Minneapolis Morning Tribune goes the Pell-Mell Award for the big story. Four notes that are alike, and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. The longer, finer cigarette in the distinguished red package, Pell Mell. Ladies and gentlemen, have you noticed how many of your friends have changed to Pell Mell? There's a reason. Pell Mell famous cigarettes. Good to look at. Good to feel. Good to taste. And good to smoke. Yes, there's one cigarette that's really different, really outstanding. Pell Mell. For Pell Mell's greater length of traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos filters the smoke of this longer, finer cigarette. Gives you that smoothness, mildness, and satisfaction no other cigarette offers you. Four notes that are alike, and one that is outstanding, and of America's leading cigarettes. One is outstanding. Pell-Mell famous cigarettes. Outstanding. And they are mild. And now the story as it actually happened. Ralph K. Mill's story as he lived it. Minneapolis, Minnesota. name, Ralph K. Mills. Your paper, the Minneapolis Morning Tribune. Your beat, well, that's your particular squawk this particular night of April 29th, because you're supposed to be working out of the city room, and instead, you're on substitute duty down at police headquarters. You thought you'd graduated from there long ago. But no, here you are, back in the cops and robbers department. As for your big story... Well, you don't know it, but there's one cooking. It starts way back, back before you even joined the paper, like this. How many times do I have to tell you not to slam that door when you come in? I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, that's all you ever say, and then you go right ahead and do it all over again. I said I was sorry. It wasn't my fault. The spring's busted. Well, why don't you fix it? I will. I will, I will. Promises, promises. Oh, lay off of me, will you, honey? Don't you honey me. I was on Oh, you make me sick. Come on, let's go out and get something to eat. Go out? I just came in. Oh, golly, I, I thought... Now what? Now what have I done? Well, we're always going out to eat. Can't we ever stay home once in a while? Stay home? When do we ever go out? When do you ever take me out? Oh, that's not fair. Well, last week Never I... mind, never mind. Forget it. I'll go out in the kitchen and make your old supper. Look, let's not keep squabbling, huh? No. Golly, everything used to be so nice. Everything used to never be... Never mind, never mind. Just go inside. Take your shoes off, dear. Read your paper, dear. Yeah, when everything's ready, you'll be fast asleep. I know. Look, it isn't as if you'd had other things to do all day. Is it asking too much for a guy to want dinner when he comes home? Is that asking too much? Just a little peace and quiet around the place? 
Do you have to pick fights with me all the time? Oh, honey. Hand me the can opener. Listen to me, will what you? What do you want? Beans with pork or without? Listen to with me. With or without? What do you want? Just a little peace and quiet around the house. Go ahead. Get sore. Who's sore? I'm just trying to make some sense here. Oh, I know that tone of voice. I can tell. You get so noble, so high and mighty. You make me sick. You make me just plain sick. Go to aspirin tablet yourself. Very clever. You know, someday I'm really going to get sore. That's right. Threaten me. Good and sore someday. One of us is going to be very sorry. Are you trying to scare me? No. I'm just telling you. You keep this up. You keep nagging the daylights out of me. You keep yapping at me. Yap, 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 yap. You keep it up and so help me. I'll... You what? You what? You have to slam that door all the time! <laughs> Honey, you home? Honey? Hey! Ah, that woman. Bartender, my wife's been in here tonight? Yeah, here and gone, friend. Here and gone. Ah, nuts. For the last time, you coming home with me? For the last time, no, 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 no! Okay. Don't bother coming home. Ever. Nothing of that can you know. You, Ralph K. Mills, police reporter for the Minneapolis Morning Tribune, do not have a backward-looking crystal ball. All you know is that it's a pretty average Friday night down at police headquarters. And average means dull. The desk sergeant's got a call. Probably the same old routine. Nothing. Headquarters. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so? Yeah? Nothing, huh? Not the way he rushed into the other room. And out comes your friend. Detective Peterson, with this. You say you had a date tonight, Rolf? Yeah, and a deadline. Why? You got another date now, you and me. Where? Down at the city dump. Very funny. With who? A corpse. In silk stockings. You coming? <laughs> All the shoveling. That does it. Mm. What a beating she took. Yeah. Any idea who she is, Peterson? No identifying marks, labels, torn off the clothes. Uh -huh. Safe and calling it murder? Sure. Say, doctor. Yes? Can you add anything? Can you give me anything more on the cause of death beyond the beating, that is? Um, yes. Um, What's that, sir? Um, this woman has dirt in her mouth. And in her throat. Yes. And proving. Uh huh. Proving she was alive when she was put here. Buried alive. Where's the nearest phone? I've got to call the paper. I'll have to hold you for the fast mail edition, George. Yes, sir, Ralph. You'll stick with it, huh? Oh, sure. But don't set your heart on an identification by the next deadline or a solution for the final edition, complete with killer attached. Could be done. Sure, by Sherlock Holmes, the FBI. To... Hey, the man is serious. Look, George, this one will go down in the books marked unsolved. Believe me. Never can tell. Just you stay with it. After all, you've got a whole hour till the next deadline. An hour? Might as well be a week. Remember, George, what I've got is a press card, not a crystal ball. Well, Sarge, I've gone through all the files. What have I found? Nothing. Oh. Did you try the rogues' gallery, Mills? Back to the year one. No soap. Petty crimes, no soap. How about missing person? Oh, nothing there either. Oh, except this. Huh? You think this picture looks like the dead one? Uh, nope. Uh, neither did I much. 
Oh, what do they want from a guy? Miracles? They sit in an office downtown at... Hey, what time is it? Uh, quarter to two. Oh, 15 minutes till the page closes. What have I got? Twice what I phoned in. Twice nothing. It... Well, who's the woman just came in with Peter? I don't know. I think I'll see what goes on. Right this way, lady. You won't take long. What's the story, Peterson? It looks like identification, Ralph. She saw your story in the paper and told the cop on the beach she thought she knew the woman. Who is she? Neighbor. Now, Mrs. Stiles, what was that woman's name again? Mrs. Crespi. Mrs. Sadie Crespi. Uh, what makes you think the murdered woman is your neighbor, ma'am? Oh, I don't know. I just have a feeling. She hasn't been home for days. Neither has her husband. They, uh, had a fight. They're always fighting. I see. Right here, Miss Stiles. Miss Dorn. Oh. A word from you is all we need. Are you all right? Yes. Yes. Well, this way, please. Ready, man? Yes. Is that your neighbor? Mrs. Cressley? Well, I... Take your time. Be sure. It, it, yes? It looks... But, oh, her face is... She's so... No, I... I mean, yes. Please. Mrs. Stiles. Oh. Yes. Yes, that... Peterson from police headquarters. Does a Mr. Cressley live here? Yes. Is he home? Uh, not right now. Expect him back? Why, uh, yes. Uh, would you like to come in and wait? Yes. Uh, who are you? Me? Yes. Why, I'm Mrs. Cressley, his wife. <laughs> We'll be back in just a moment with tonight's big story, but first a word from Cy Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, have you noticed how many of your friends have changed to Pell-Mell? There's a reason. Pell-Mell famous cigarettes... Good to look at. Good to feel. Good to taste. And good to smoke. Yes, there's one cigarette that's really different, really outstanding. Pell-Mell. When you pick up a Pell-Mell, you can see the difference, you can feel the difference. And when you smoke a Pell-Mell, you can taste the difference. For Pell-Mell's greater length of traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos filters the smoke of this longer, finer cigarette. Gives you that smoothness, mildness, and satisfaction no other cigarette offers you. Four notes that are alike and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. The longer, finer cigarette in the distinguished red package. Pell-Mell famous cigarettes. Outstanding. And they are mild. Now, we return you to our narrator, Bob Sloan, and the big story of Ralph K. Mills, as he lived it, and wrote it. A fine thing. Covering police headquarters for the Minneapolis Morning Tribune, you, Ralph K. Mills, have a blonde corpse turn up in time for the first edition. A person unknown, murdered by person or persons unknown. And the city desk hopes for the who and the by whom for the final edition. And you've just followed a false trail to the bitter end. Just another case of mistaken identity. So what do you do? Step one, you call the desk. A mistake, George. The woman who identified the corpse was wrong. I'm sorry. It wasn't your fault, Ralph. Any ideas? Didn't you say before you thought you'd found a picture of a missing woman? Who yeah, might... yeah, but the desk cop and I agreed it wasn't the dead one. Well, just the same, the woman was wrong just now. Couldn't you be? What was the date she disappeared? 1935. 
Her name was Ruth M. Corneau. Well, she could have changed in all those years. So backtrack. Everybody makes mistakes. Yeah, I know. That's why they put erasers on lead pencils. And tonight, my pencil is all eraser. Stone, Collins, Compton, Copley, Corno. Ruth M. Corno reported missing by husband. Mm -hmm. Talking to yourself, Rolf? I, I don't know. Look, Sarge, uh -huh. this Corno woman we tossed out of the running before. Anything else on her? Charges, complaints? Corno? Let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah. Here it is. Corno. Oh, no. This is a man. Peter Corno. Go on. Arrested on complaint of his wife, Ruth M. That's the one? For what? What for? <laughs> You're going to love this, Ralph. Assault. Hello? Joe Lopez? Yes, sir. Mr. Lopez, this is Ralph Mills down at headquarters. What's with headquarters? I'm in trouble? No, sir. I'm from the Morning Tribune. I'm checking on somebody who used to live in your boarding house. Huh? Can I ask you three questions? Uh, I don't know. Just three simple yes or no questions, okay? Okay. Three. Okay. Do you remember a couple named Corno, Peter, and Ruth? Yes. That's one. Good. Do you know where they are now? Him? No. Her, she ran away from him. Kicks around restaurants, clubs, you know. That's two. Three. Would you know her if you saw her? I guess so. You owe me back rent. Well, would you come down to headquarters? You to... say three questions. No. This is Detective Peterson, Lopez. Will you come downtown to identify a body? Yes. <laughs> Miss Lopez. Take your time, Miss Lopez, be sure. Well? Don't look like I'm gonna get my back rent. I guess. For the identification, you say goodbye to Detective Peterson until later. You make the 1130 edition by our replayed and our whisker. The murdered woman is Ruth M. Corno, and it's definitely established that she is separated from her husband under conditions of mutual dislike, to put it mildly. And so, you have the victim, the motive, and the problem of finding suspect number one, the husband. Then on your own, you start checking all over town. But while you walk the jukebox and neon trail, the husband is being questioned down in Florida. Private First Class Peter Cano reporting to Captain Carroll as directed. That is, Carno. Yeah. You're a Minneapolis boy, Private? Yes, sir. Ever in trouble with the police? Nothing serious, sir. I'm instructed by Detective Peterson of the Minneapolis Police to tell you that anything you tell me may be held against you. He just called me. I see, sir. You married, Carno? Separated, sir. Sir, where... Later. Where were you last night? On pass, sir. I reported to duty at Reveille today. Where'd you go? Fishing, sir. Can you prove it? The men I was with can. Sir? You didn't leave the state of Florida? On an overnight pass, sir. All right. You say you're separated from your wife? Yes, sir. Prepare yourself for a shot. Last night she was murdered. I see. Yes, What's that, man? I said I knew somebody would someday. You want another pass? Excuse me, sir? I said, do you want me to write you a three-day pass for her funeral? No. No, thanks, sir. Suspect eliminated. And there you are looking for him in the local bars. But at one, you learn about this tasteful little incident from a bar girl. He used to pal around, Ruthie and me. But she was... 
Well, she was kind of hard, you know. Everybody was just another sucker for her. Well, I mean, well, money, you know. So one night, we was here, her and I. All of a sudden, she leaves me flat and goes outside. Goes tearing through the door. And I follow her just in time to see her crash in the sofa. Hey, why don't you walk where you're looking? Oh, I'm sorry, lady. You're sorry? Look at my stockings. You ruined my stockings. Sorry, that's all I ever hear is sorry. You knocked the lift off my shoes. I said I was sorry. It's for the shoes. I'll drive you home, okay? And what, a bus? Hit the road. <laughs> okay, have it your way. Watch where you Hey, wait a minute. Is, uh... Is this your car, or did you just drive it for somebody? Hey, it's my car. I drive it for myself. Well, why didn't you say so? Home, James. The name is Carson. Wally Carson. Been talk nice, Blondie. Hey, you're not bad looking at all. Where'd you say you wanted to go? You're not bad looking either for a guy who picks girls up by knocking them down. I said, talk nice, baby. <laughs> Where to, sis? Do you want to ride? Home? No. I want to ride. Let's go someplace and have some fun. Huh? While the bar girl's telling this, you check your watch. A half hour to final deadline. You're coming closer. Very close. All you need now is... What'd you say the name of that pickup guy was? Wally Carson. <laughs> you having them steady after that. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I'm going to try another bar, but... Here, buy yourself a drink. With something in it to drink for a change. Well, like I said, everything's going nice and quiet when it's blonde. Corno? Yeah. She comes in and takes over the end of the bar. Now, I'd seen her husband come and drag her out, and I'd seen him tell her not to come home, and... I don't want that kind of trade. This is a home-type bar. I know, I know. The one? Oh. Uh, well, uh, she's feeling fine, no pain at all, drinking up some guy's door figure, and uh, I'm wondering how I can get rid of her quiet when all of a sudden somebody does it for me. A door opens, and in walks this guy, Cart. <laughs> Rudy. Somebody call me? Oh, it's you. Yeah, it's me, all right. Where you been the last two days? Who wants to know? I want to know. You want to know. You own me or something? Stop pushing me around. Who push who around? You make up to me, you take me for everything I got, and you call that me pushing you around? Come on, you're getting out of here. Ah, your meat is running. Come on. I like it here. I said get out now. Come on. You cheap square, you make me. Go on, hit the road. You get out of here. You let me go. Take your hands off me. Who do you think you're pushing around? Let go of me. Who do you think you are pushing around? That's it. Me, it's none of my business. I would have paid him to take her away, anybody. And that's all. Uh huh? When would you say this was? Well, didn't I tell you? Only last night it was. Just last night. That is it. Motive and man. Wally Carson, last man to see Ruth Corno alive. A check on the city directory gives you his address. A call to Peterson, and you have a good cop with you. One short ride, and you have ten minutes to go to the final deadline with your story on the other side of this door. Peterson unbuttons the flap on his holster. You shift a little behind him. You never can tell. Nobody home, you think? I don't know. Here, take the gun. Cover me. Stand back. I'll force the door. Blood on the walls. Carson! Watch at the other room. Carson, come out with you. Pete, look. The note in the couch. Uh-uh. Don't touch it. Okay to read it? Go ahead. Dear mother, 
the mother. I'm sorry. We had a terrific fight. I loved her, and I couldn't stand to lose her. But I couldn't hold her. I guess nobody could. Money in watch pocket for rent. I'm going away. Hope we meet soon. Phone the coop. Can I use the phone? You're sure, and you can read them the note, too. Thanks. You know, there's, there's something about this note. Money in watch pocket. Money in watch pocket? Hey, he expects to be found. What's that door lead to? That closet. What's this one? It leads to the garage. Come on, the front way. <laughs> On the inside. Wait a minute. Listen. Engine's running. He gets down on his knees. So do you. You sniff at the bottom of the door. You both say one word. No. Two. Curl up on my knucks. In just a moment, we'll read you a telegram from Ralph K. Mills of the Minneapolis Morning Tribune with the final outcome of tonight's big story. The cigarette that's really different. The longer, finer cigarette that's really outstanding. Pell-Mell famous cigarettes. Good to look at. Good to feel. Good to taste. And good to smoke. Yes, Pell-Mells are good to look at, good to feel, good to taste, and good to smoke. Four notes that are alike, and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. The longer, finer cigarette in the distinguished red package. Pell-Mell Famous Cigarettes. Outstanding. And they are mild. Now we read you that telegram from Ralph K. Mills of the Minneapolis Morning Tribune. On entering garage, we found that killer in tonight's big story had escaped beyond the law by committing suicide. Solution of case came at 3 a.m., nine hours after start of investigation and in time for the final edition. Many thanks for tonight's Pell-Mell Award. Thank you, Mr. Mills. The makers of Pell-Mell Famous Cigarettes are proud to have named you the winner of the Pell-Mell $500 Award for notable service in the field of journalism. Listen again next week, same time, same station, when Pell-Mell Famous Cigarettes will present another big story. A big story from the front pages of the Mobile, Alabama, Press Register. Byline, George Cox. A big story about a murder, an escape, and a manhunt. The Big Story is produced by Bernard J. Proctor with music by Vladimir Selinsky. Tonight's program was written by Alan Sloan. Your narrator was Bob Sloan, and Art Carney played the part of Ralph K. Mills. In order to protect the names of people actually involved in tonight's authentic big story, the names of all characters in the dramatization were changed, with the exception of the reporter, Mr. Mills. This is Ernest Chappell speaking for the makers of Pell-Mell Famous Cigarettes. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.